Okay, I'm here at Abel Cine Burbank, and uh, this is a special event for full frame cameras. Right now, these are the more standard. Eh? This is the Aerie Alexa, the Aerie Alexa Mini, the Sony Venice full frame camera with a Zeiss 15 to 30 zoom lens, compact zoom. Oh, look at that glass. Sony Venice Cine Alta. The Canon C EOS C700 full frame. It's a brand new Canon full frame with a Zeiss 28 to 80 compact zoom. Red Monstro full frame camera with the Leica 30 millimeter prime. Okay, here's the Airy Alexa LF. LF means large format? Yes, large format. And, and, and it's got a 35 millimeter Airy Signature Series large format lens. I guess it's got the large format mount too. And uh, yeah, so this is the new large format Airy Alexa. Go ahead and go around this side here. This is David from, from Canon. So David, tell me about uh, um, large format or full full frame cameras. So like you have the 700 FF, which is for full frame. Okay, so what does full frame give you that, let's say like Super 35 doesn't? Well, it gives you aesthetic. So if you want, you know, more control over your depth of field, then you have it. And it also gives you higher resolution, possibly, because all the cameras that you know they have introduced in the full frame for all the manufacturers are actually have a bump up in resolution. But that's not necessarily tied to the sensor. So resolution isn't tied necessarily to the size of the sensor, but in most cases you do get a bump in resolution as well. Why have large format? What what does the large format give you? Ah, in terms of the sensor size? Ah, so now we're yeah, going to I mean, a there's sensor. a larger there's a larger sensor so and the LF twice, camera. So it's twice as big as an Alexa uh, uh, open gate sensor. Okay. So it's slightly larger than full frame. And what happens is the way that photography and image making works, the larger you are image sensor wise, the closer you are to reality in terms of image size. So you stand maybe five or six feet tall. If I had a five or six foot tall sensor, I could reproduce you one for one, right? There'd be no scaling. It would be but wouldn't one that, to one. Wouldn't that just be a lens issue? Like you can, if you, if, let's say you use a lens that would be closer to, let's say, human eyesight. No, it doesn't work that way. It's the size of how you represent something. It's like drawing a small picture versus seeing the Eiffel Tower in real life. I look at the picture of the Eiffel Tower, a small picture or a small drawing, it looks impressive. When I see it in real life, it's one for one. The closer you get to one for one, Reproduction with a sensor. Of course, it's not possible to build a six-foot sensor. But if you could, the bigger, the, I mean, the bigger the sensor, the more dimensionality it has. So it almost appears more 3D. So that's one of the things that large format does. We've had DPs tell us it looks deeper, it looks more dimensional, it almost looks more 3D in a very surreal kind of way. And also, it allows you to be much more selective in your depth of field as well. So your shallowness increases by a full stop. So this large format sensor at a T1.8, your lens here like the Signature Prime has the same depth of field as a T1.2 in Super 35. So that's a much shallower depth of field. So I actually had a DP shoot with this lens and he stopped down to a 4 or 5, 6 and he's looking at it going, I never stopped down to a 4 to 5, 6. But because the format, the larger sensor is so much more shallow, he gets the ability to separate things with wide lenses as well. So for example, Dan Lawson who shot The Shape of Water, he did the launch film with the Alexa LF and he was shooting on the 25 millimeter and he felt that it was so unique because he could, with wide open, at one point on the 25, he still felt like it was an incredibly shallow lens. It didn't have that same feeling like a 25 would normally have with a lot of depth of field. Like the people at Sony were just saying like, well, the only difference is you have more real estate. He's not saying it's 3D. He's not saying that it's it's closer to reality. Their, but their philosophy is, is that is that the full frame is allows you to 
crop and stabilize and but you just basically the only thing it virtually does is give you more real estate on all sides of the frame so well, when it you're does give you more real estate yeah, yeah. they're saying that it doesn't make an aesthetic difference they're absolutely wrong what are the advantages of having a, um, a, a, like a, a red full frame over, let's say, the, the, other, the other full frame cameras? Yeah, you know, uh, one of the main advantages and the easiest one is um, we're doing 8K. Okay. Whereas a lot of those other cameras are doing 4.5K or 5K. Okay. And you can also see here that I'm doing 8K at the same time as a concurrent 4K ProRes, 2K or 4K ProRes. Okay. Now you might say, hey, this is a 4K world that we're living in. Great, 4K 10-bit, I'm doing 16-bit raw here at 8K. So here's my 8K. So you're, so you're shooting both 8K and 4K at the same time. Right, so what does that equate to? That is the same thing as saying, I would like to shoot, right? This, you're getting this, I'm shooting all of this, and I can move that frame around wherever I want. I met a uh, renowned cameraman, cinematographer, Scott Ressler, and he's gonna, he's gonna describe why full frame cameras are the, all the rage. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it by any means, but my understanding is that the reason for full frame is the different look. And the different look is essentially shallower focus for the same width. So basically, the larger your sensor, the wider uh, field of view, um, the wider area that a lens films for the same millimeter. Say, say you have two cameras side by side and one of them super 35 and one of them's full frame. It's a large format frame. And they both have a 35 millimeter on them. The, um, the uh, full frame camera is going to show more. It's going to show more width wise and height wise. But it'll still have roughly the same depth of field. So you get this what I would call a high fashion look. Um, like a full frame still camera like a Canon 5D or something like that where you, you have um, you can show width, but you still have this nice shallow focus. It's really nice for skin tones. But the cameras they're pimping here are beyond the A7S. They're 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 pushing out, let's say, like the Red Monstro, the uh, Sony Venice, the new uh, uh, C700 FF. Right. Um, so, and then I guess Scary has a uh, uh, the LF version of the of the Alexa. Correct. So there's they're 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 obviously a different, uh, 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 um, you know, for, let's say, maybe well-financed cinema <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> versus, uh, you know, the, 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 the sort of uh, Sony hybrid still camera that you can shoot video with. Correct. But, but the, for some of those cameras, the, uh, the um, uh, it would be the LF and, mm. and the... Um, trying to think of which other ones. <laughs> they have the same chip size roughly as a Canon 5D it's, mm -hmm. or a, a Sony A7S or A7R. So it's not... It's so why spend the other, the, the extra like $90,000 then? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well there are, I, you know, this is basically what you're discussing is the difference between a small camera and a cinema camera. Um, one of them's convenience. You know, you have professional XLR connectors and you can roll for as long as you want. Uh, they, frame rates. Fr you can, you have, uh, in general, better frame rates, although small cameras are, I mean, some of them have 160 or 240 frames now, which is as good as any of these cameras. Um, but it really comes down to uh, higher uh, uh, bit rate codecs so that, like, when you do color timing at the end, they, the image doesn't fall apart. Um, you get better dynamic range, usually, <laughs> on, on the higher-end cameras, at least some of them. Uh, you definitely get a better color quality. A lot of them are 444 color uh, and 12-bit or 16-bit, and you can't get that in a still camera. Although, 
the new um, Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K has 12-bit RAW, so and that's a $1,300 camera. Yeah, but that's but that's Blackmagic's uh, RAW. It's a little different than 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 a higher end, let's say, a Canon RAW. Or I mean, from, from my experience, I've always saw the 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 the, um, the Blackmagic's color space does not hold up against some of these other other companies. I I don't really know. I've not tested it. I don't know enough mm. about Blackmagic, but I do know that they're color science is considered pleasing. I don't know if it if it's uh, stir, you know hardy when uh, color time. That could be another yeah, issue. Yeah, but you know the other thing too is like when you're when you're working in the prosumer space, there's all these other things that you need to make the camera a professional camera. These cameras, you know, you can get professional viewfinders, professional uh, uh, battery power power things. There's always these kind of rickety accessory solutions for these smaller cameras that that don't that, that aren't as efficient and, and, and aren't as uh, ergonomic as Correct. when you're working with you know a professional equipment and that's just the way you know you, you know you have to make certain choices when you're working in that prosumer world yeah exactly yeah. Uh, I, I would say that uh, when you go back after you use a camera like this and you go back to uh, a mirrorless or DSLR it's a kind of a nightmare <laughs> because you're just used to the camera working um, giving you what you expect uh, looking beautiful I mean of course you have to make it look beautiful but it's just it's less work it's more reliable it's a hardier codec um, professional uh, equipment and also trying to get professional assistance and support to work on your your mirrorless camera is a nightmare they just won't take the job yeah I, I have a funny story today I was talking to a filmmaker I mean a, a director actor director who's who, who's not really hands-on right and they shot he shot something and he said to me it's like oh it didn't go well it was out of focus and this and that but we're gonna invest in a more expensive camera next time and I just thought I'm like I'm like right now now, you can pretty much pick any camera up and get and, and, and get excellent results if you know how to use it. Exactly. Yeah.